Hello, welcome back to our Halion 6 video tutorial series and today we're talking about oscillators. So this is very often when I do these tutorial series, episode one, it's just that Halion is such a monster there was a lot of groundwork we had to lay in order to be able to get to the stage where we could talk about the oscillators. So this is how the thing is going to make sound. So we've got a completely empty synth here, we don't even have anything in our slot rack. So let's start from scratch drag the program into the slot rack that implicitly ties this slot to this program create a layer that our housekeeping folders think of them like that and then inside the layer we're going to create a zone and we have five zones to choose from and today we're talking about synth zones so now that we've got our zone we see some new information pop up here uh, we're taken straight to the edit tab which is where you'll spend the majority of your time and it's defaulted to the sound tab this is a bit of a weird one and w I could talk about the sound tab in any number of different tutorial videos because it's a very context sensitive kind of thing but the sound tab gives you information about whatever is currently selected so when I selected a layer we get information about the layer when I select the program then that information changes subtly but when I select a zone it changes dramatically and here we have our uh, zone sections and we had an entire video on how to manage these sections so if we're talking about the oscillators today this is our oscillator section so we've disabled everything click the oscillator section and here we have it each synth zone has three primary oscillators, a sub oscillator, a ring modulator and a noise generator. I'm going to deal with each of these in turn, don't worry. For now, we're going to turn two of the oscillators off so that we can really zone in on this individual oscillator. And as things stand at the moment, we've got a sine. Really simple sine wave. So let's have a look at all the controls in this little box and try to figure out what they all do. We have a free phase drop down here and this bit means that the oscillator is sweeping in the background all the time, generating its wave, it never stops. And when we press the key down, we just piggyback on top of it wherever it happens to be at the time. In random phase, every time you generate a new tone, every time you give the oscillator a new signal, it will explicitly choose a new point on the phase map uh, with which to start drawing its shape. So if you imagine like a sine wave, the classical sine wave, if you're in random mode every single time you press a key it's just going to choose a new part on that sine wave and start playing it from there. And finally fixed phase, basically you specify any value between 0 and 360, can't go past 360, won't let you and that's the fixed point on the phase cycle where every single uh, tone that's generated will appear. So if we set it to zero, then they're all fixed uh, with zero degrees phase. So I can demonstrate phase quite easily by having two sine waves, have them both at zero degrees fixed phase, and we hear a sine wave, make oscillator two 180 degrees, both the levels exactly the same and the sound completely disappears they're cancelling each other out perfectly when one of them was set slightly different to the other we do hear a tiny amount of sine wave the bigger amplitude is not completely cancelled out by the smaller one then we have uh, pitch offsets so we can increase in entire octaves in entire semitones and in cents, one hundredths of semitones. Pretty straightforward. Obviously this is our master oscillator level. All nice and simple so far. And then we click this button and things start going a little bit more involved. At the top we have our traditional 
types of waves that we would expect in most synthesizers. So now we have a triangle, so and square. So when we choose square, see it says square PWM. Okay. So that is a pulse wave with the minimum possible pulse width. at 50. It's easier for me to just type it in than faff around trying to get it exact. That's now a square wave. 50% high, 50% low. Equal duty cycles, positive and negative, that is a square wave. And then as we go up, so remember from previous or other tutorial series we've done, uh, a pulse wave is basically like a mirror image of itself. So if you have a pulse wave at 80%, that sounds exactly the same as that. Doesn't matter whether the duty cycle is 80% or 20%, they're simply inverted versions of the same thing. And back to our square wave. Sign sync. In sync mode, and we've got sync modes for each of the four wave types. At zero, you're going to get a regular sine wave. And there it is. As we start increasing the waveform knob in sync mode, it's going to apply a second master wave to the slave. The, the, what, what we can see here, what we've chosen in the interface, it turns into a slave wave. And we have another master wave. Each time the master reaches the end of its cycle, the slave is forced to refire. And so we get notches in the curve. We can no longer draw a perfect sine wave. Now at every 20% we get back to a perfect sine wave because the frequency at which the master is oscillating is a perfect multiple of the slave. In other words, it fits perfectly inside. Once we go past 20%, we're back into the sync territory. until we get to 40. Where we hit another perfect harmonic. And same for 60 and 80. All those bits in between, you can hear all those cracklings. There's no other way via, via standard synthesis methods that you can draw a wave like that. Only with um, synchronization can you actually achieve this effect because the, the wave is basically being hard chopped at a, an arbitrary point in time and then the redrawing commences again. You can have that for any of the different sort of, uh, wave types. Classic saw. And at 20, you get another perfect saw. So they're always perfect um, harmonic intervals. So it's basically covering a five octave span. If I turn this down to zero, play a note, set it to 20, play a note one octave lower, it's the same note. Okay. CM stands for cross modulation. This is basically frequency modulation. Cross-modulation is like an umbrella term, and one of the elements of cross-modulation is frequency modulation. So what's happening here is that we're back into the territory of carrier wave and modulating wave. So our carrier wave is a sign. That's the sound that we're going to hear. The modulating wave 
is controlled by the waveform. So here we have our sine wave and it already doesn't look quite right. What's going to happen when we increase this waveform knob is that we get this wobble effect. The waves kind of dancing, jigging backwards and forwards. So what's causing that effect? Well, it's really difficult to see inside Hallium because the effect itself is kind of masked. But I can show you with the ARP. So now this is the multiscope for the ARP. So first things first, if I press a note, there's our sine wave. Now what I've done is, so VCO2 is generating the sine wave. And what we've got here is uh, another sine wave at low frequency being used as a modulating wave. So VCO2 is now the carrier in frequency modulation parlance and VCO3 is the modulating wave. So when I in introduce that modulating wave, we get vibrato. I'll turn this down so I can talk over the top of it. So that's vibrato there. You can see the pitch of the tone going up and down over time. The more waves you can see on the screen, the higher the pitch, and that's what's causing it to go up and down. Now at low frequencies, it's really easy to hear these. But as we start increasing the frequency of the waves, you can just about keep up with them there. Now it's starting to become kind of more difficult to keep track. We step up to the next speed of VCO3 and start again. got dancing waves. So that is what we were seeing in Hallian 3. The waves kind of jigging backwards and forwards. Let's go back over to it and have another look. So this is Hallian's. There we go. Very similar sound. So that's a sine wave being modulated very quickly by a second modulating sine wave and that's what we get with cross modulation basically frequency modulation as we increase the waveform we increase the frequency of the modulating wave we get the classic FM kind of sound and 10,000 sci-fi films have used that kind of sound. So each of the four different waveforms has cross-modulation capacity, but they all fundamentally do the same thing. There's our dancing triangle wave and triangles dancing backwards and forwards. Dancing saws. Brilliant. XOR is the final wave type in the master, the primary oscillators. This stands for exclusive OR. Now what this means is that the modulator this time takes the form of two square waves. And they're, they're, they're oscillating at different pitches, different speeds, and they're combined. And if one but not both of the square waves is on, then an, uh, a, a true, a signal of true yes, basically, is output from this um, square wave pair. If both of them are on, nothing is output, and if neither of them are on, nothing is output. So that's why it's called exclusive OR, because one of them has to be on and the other has to not be on in order for it to be exclusive. Now what you get when you sum these two square waves together 
and use that as a modulating source on your sine wave is something that sounds a little bit like ring modulation. Every time the output of the combination of the square waves is true, the sine wave is reset. It's a resetting of the wave that we're hearing. If I freeze this, you can see the sine wave being drawn until the signal triggers and then it's reset and then it starts drawing again. All of that is a single oscillator uh, occupying a single voice. Now we have this multi-oscillator mode. MO stands for multi-oscillator. And incredibly, Hallian isn't happy with supplying you with three oscillators, a sub, a ring, and a noise generator per zone. You can have any number of zones. Inside each oscillator, you can have any number of voices. So here we have a saw wave. But if I click this little edit button, then these three options down here change and they're now multi-oscillator options and we can specify the number of voices up to eight. What you get with fractional selections is four oscillators at full volume and one of them at 20% volume in this case. If we apply a little bit of detune, we get a flanging effect. This is one oscillator using one voice. Whoa. Kind of ridiculous. Increase the pan, increase the detune, crank that all the way up. So that's one oscillator. Since that's generating a sawtooth, just to show you how monstrous these oscillators really are, if I turn multi-oscillator mode on for all of these three, give them all several voices, detune them all a bit, make this a triangle, this a square. Now that harshness it is partially coming from the fact that we set the phase to zero. If we go back to free phase in all three sounds, now we're not triggering everything all at the same time and getting that really sharp attack sound. Isn't that, that's pretty impressive for a single oscillator bank to be able to generate that. So that's, the equivalent of what 12 voices being generated there by this single bank. The sub oscillator is exactly what it says, a low tone generator. We have a limited number, but still perfectly usable at, at low frequencies. You don't want to be getting too carried away with your harmonics. So we have a, a, a number of waves that we can generate. And the frequency of the sub oscillator is determined by the master pitch of the layer that the zone sits in. So here we are having selected the layer and in the main section we have our octave tuning. And again we can choose whether or not the phase is freely oscillating in the background and we just jump on whenever we can or random or fixed phase as for the primary oscillators. Okay let's deal with the ring mod. So ring modulation there are two ways that you can define it. When I first came across ring modulation uh, I used the concept of uh, one oscillator being multiplied with another 
and I've used that phrase actually in tutorials of my own without really understanding it. But the, the, the alternative definition is that a ring modulator applies a sum and difference between two waves. And what that means is that you're going to add two oscillators together and you're going to output both the sum of their frequencies and the difference of their frequencies. Now that's a bit of a head mash, so I'm just going to show you. And in order to do it, I'm going to enlist the help of span. We'll turn the ring modulator off. Firstly, let's get oscillator one generating a sine wave. And there we have it. So that's roughly 131, 132 hertz, which is C. Now let's take oscillator two generate another sine wave, one octave higher. Two hundred and sixty-six, two hundred and sixty-ish hertz. Two six two, something like that. So if we add those two waves together, we're going to get two different numbers. You get one which is 130 plus 260, 390 hertz, and we're going to get one which is 260 minus 130, which is 130. So we should end up with the original 130, the 260 that comes from oscillator 2, and then a new harmonic at 390. So, firstly, both oscillators on at the same time. 130, 260. Now we turn the ring modulator on. So this is going to produce the sum and difference of those waves. We've got oscillator 1 into oscillator 2. Roughly the same level. There's your 130. There's your 260. There's your 390. And you can change which two waves get. Uh, modulated so oscillator one and sub for option one and oscillator two and three for option two so if we want to ring mod these two oscillators then we'll get a different sound obviously because this is a, a much more complex relationship now we've got a whole raft of frequencies so ring modulation is really interesting, uh, a unique method of synthesis that can produce very complex harmonics very easily just by this uh, sum and difference concept between two waves. And the more harmonically rich the waveforms that you have, then the more effect you're going to get out of it. ring modulation and finally the easiest of all noise that's white noise all the frequencies pink noise you could basically uh, apply a low pass filter to white noise to get pink noise basically throw some of the high frequencies away introduce all of this low rumble and then we've got bandpass filters where you can see the bandpass filter being applied and there it is throwing some of the frequencies on either side away. In true Hallian fashion uh, taking the oscillator, the concept of the oscillator bank to 11, completely ridiculous the, the options available to you within a single zone just using the oscillator bank are mind-boggling Ooh, that was a big one. Thanks very much for watching and uh, hope to see you next time for something maybe, hopefully, possibly not quite so headbendy. See you then.